Welcome to the Pediatric Review, where I help you prepare for your pediatric nursing exams. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. Okay, so let's talk about pediatric oncological disorders. So the first one is leukemia. This is a malignant increase in leukocytes at an immature stage in the bone marrow, leading to bone marrow suppression. Signs and symptoms are anemia due to decreased erythrocytes, infection from neutropenia, we'll see a fever, bleeding from decreased platelet production, so we'll see petechiae, pallor, fatigue, anorexia, bone and joint pain, hepatosplenomegaly, and lymphopathy, decreased hemoglobin and hematocrit. They can show signs of cranial nerve 7 or cranial nerve involvement or spinal nerve involvement, and they can have signs of intracranial pressure. So our nursing interventions are bleeding can be controlled with a platelet transfusion or packed red blood cells. Small meals that require little chewing is best for non, not irritating oral mucosa. Par parenteal or anterior feedings may be needed if they can't eat because of the inflamed oral mucosa. And if a patient is receiving chemotherapy, we want to monitor for severe bone marrow suppression, infection, bleeding. We want to make sure to protect them from infections, monitor for nausea, vomiting, monitoring their bowels. They may need antiemetics or stool softeners. Monitor for hemorrhagic cystitis, peripheral neuropathy, oral membranes for mucositis. And we want to educate on hair loss and that will, hair will grow back in three to six months. And we want to monitor them closely for infection as this is a major cause of death in immunosuppressed children. Hodgkin's disease, a type of lymphoma, malignancy of the lymph nodes. It's characterized by the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells. Signs and symptoms include pain Less enlarged lymph nodes, enlarged firm non-tender movable nodes in the supraventricular area, abdominal pain, weight loss, intermittent low-grade fever, night sweats, and paritis. Nursing interventions include treatment without mediastinal node involvement if radiation of the involved lymph nodes, if more extensive both radiation and chemotherapy are used. Monitor for medication-induced pancytopenia and depression of all cellular blood components. Monitor for nausea and vomiting and administer antiemetics. Encourage fluids and food. Provide small, frequent meals and monitor for weight loss. Mucosar, mucosal ulcerations. Provide soothing oral hygiene and prescribe mouth rinses and topical anesthetics for diarrhea. Administer antispasmodics and antidiarrheal preparations as prescribed. Introduce the idea of a wig or head wrap to the child. Provide scalp hygiene, head covering in cold weather. Wash skin daily with mild soap. Do not remove skin markings for radiation. So where they do the radiation, they're actually going to mark it so they can hit that spot every time. So you want to make sure not to remove that. Avoid sun exposure. Monitor for hematuria and avoid suppositories, enema, and rectal temps, institute neutropenic and bleeding precautions. So let's talk about nephroblastoma or Wilms tumor. This, this is the most common intra-abdominal and kidney tumor in children. It has a poor prognosis and is very invasive. Signs and symptoms are firm, non-tender, irregular mass in the abdomen that crosses the midline. Lymph adenopathy in the cervical and subclavicular area, pallor, weakness, weight loss, anorexia, irritability, signs of respiratory or neurological impairment, partial paralysis from spinal cord compression. We also want to avoid palpation of the abdomen in child's, children with a Wilms tumor and be cautious when bathing, moving, or handling because we must keep the tumor intact. If it ruptures, it can cause the cancer cells to spread throughout the abdomen, lymph, and bloodstream. The patient will most likely need surgery, pre-op monitoring for signs and symptoms related to the tumor location, post-op monitoring for surgical complications due to organ infected, 
monitor complications of radiation and chemotherapy, and provide support to the child and their family. Then we have a neuroblastoma. This is a tumor that forms in the adrenal glands or sympathetic chain, it usually occurs before 10 years old. The presenting signs are caused by tumor compression at nearby organs. Nursing interventions are surgery to remove as much of the tumor as possible. Then they'll use radiation and chemotherapy. Post-op, we monitor for complications related to the location or organ of the surgery. Then we have osteocarcinoma. So this is the most common bone cancer in children found in the physis of the long bone, especially in the lower extremities in the age of onset is 10 to 25. Signs and symptoms include pain at the affected site, usually the lower extremity relieved by a flex position. They may have a palpable mass, be limping, limited range of motion, and pathological fractures at the tumor site. Our nursing interventions are emotional support for the child and family, communicate honestly, prepare for surgery, resection, or amputation of the limb and chemotherapy, and educate the family and patient on phantom limb pain that may occur after amputation. Then we have a brain tumor. This is an, an infratentorial tumor. It's usually located in the posterior third of the brain. A supratentorial tumor is located within the anterior two-thirds of the brain, mainly the cerebrum. Symptoms depend on the location, but we can see headache that worsens on awakening and improves during the day, vomiting that's unrelated to eating, ataxia, seizures, behavioral changes, clumsiness, difficulty walking, dipiplopia, and facial weakness. Nursing interventions are to monitor for signs of intracranial pressure with a brain tumor and after a craniotomy. We want to pre-op, have a neuro assessment every four hours and institute seizure precautions, assess weight loss and nutritional status, shave the child's head as prescribed, and educate the child and family on head dressings. Post-op, we want to do a neuro assessment, monitoring temps closely, monitoring signs of meningitis, which are Koenig's and Bradinsky's sign, as well as an estethotonus. Monitor for hemorrhage and pupillary response. Monitor for colorless drainage from the dressing ears or nose. This would be cerebral spinal fluid, which we don't want. Monitor IV fluid and use measures to prevent vomiting because that increases intracranial pressure and quiet environment. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.